both because of agrarian distress and the growing risks because of climate change, you are finding people leaving their homes in desperation. And that's why you've had massive exodus out of villages into cities. What COVID has done for the first time is actually sent people back. It's a reverse migration. And you're seeing today, therefore, the possibility. And this is where we are stressing there is a possibility. Two things are possible. One, if we invest in rural economies, build the resilience of people, invest in natural resource management in rural areas, you can actually build for conditions so that people can live um, at home, they can live in their villages, live with well-being. That's one. Two, the fact is, till now, we have had this atrocious globalization system in which the world has built uh, an economy by discounting both labor and the environment, which is why you have these atrocious labor conditions in our cities, because everybody needs to compete with China, everywhere else in the world where you want to keep the costs lower. Today, with the exodus of labor, for the first time in India, there is a discussion about how labor rights need to be, because industry needs that labor. They will have to give higher wages to the labor. They will have to give housing to the labor. Now, that will mean increased uh, cost of production. So is there an opportunity for the world to talk about a different model of growth, moving away from consumption-led growth, cheap, obsolete production to well-being-led growth? I don't know, but this is really where the question is today. And that's what you're seeing playing out in for India. sure is that we've observed migration flows that were very different from what we used to observe. As Sunita Narain mentioned, there was a massive reverse migration from the cities to the countryside that was observed in India and in many developing countries, but also in Europe. If I take the case of, of Paris, for example, more than one billion people left the region of Paris during the lockdown because they wanted to go uh, to the countryside. So that we, we saw a kind of rural exodus re in reverse. Uh, and that's interesting to see if that will, if this is a trend that will continue in the long run. Then uh, I think it's important that many citizens from industrialized countries were also stuck at home and, and, and so important restrictions to their mobility. And in a way, uh, they felt the restrictions that they had imposed to migrants from developing countries for years. And all of a sudden, they were no longer welcome in other countries, including in the US, in the case of Europeans. And I think that is something that can also, uh, in the long run, affect the relationship and the migration flows. And then there is also the issue that uh, migrants were really on the front line during this crisis, that they were usually more exposed to the virus, that typically the mortality rate was much higher amongst migrant population compared to native populations. And clearly we saw an important array of inequalities in access to health, uh, in access to health facilities that really affected the migrants. And indeed, this is also likely that, means that this might affect uh, the migration flows and the migration policies in the future, because we saw how important and how essential the migrant workers were to the economy. Final point, and we'll have the figures at the end of this year, uh, the income available for many migrants was also significantly cut, which means that the amount of remittances that would, they will be able to send back home to their families that represented more than $500 billion last year is likely to be reduced significantly this year, which will affect the resources available to many families in the Global South. And we know that a lot of countries, a lot of families depend on these remittances for their livelihoods.